don't you get don't you get on don't you get on word of mine i'm jen gooch i'm 34 uh, i'm a musician artist crafter maker doer I grew up playing fiddle and violin. I love old country um, and old blues and folk, early early jazz, like basically just raw sounds of, of people getting together and making music. Board up the windows and block the door. Ignore that thing in the corner. My, my dad's folks are just Okies, and, and uh, so the, the kind of music that was around was always sort of indicative of people's politics and backgrounds. I really got into how, what music people listen to, what it says about who, who they are, how they relate to their past and their culture. This is my fabric cord. Like my favorite show when I was a kid was Little House on the Prairie. I think that's probably influenced way more of my life than I realized. <laughs> I wove this, um, yeah, on a loom. <laughs> started doing some grad school at University of North Texas in fibers. My work really started turning conceptual there. And I was doing a lot more performance and video and realized that I I, you know, was interested in pursuing that more. So at 27, I left Texas for the first time and moved to Pittsburgh to come to grad school at CMU. Hands of stranger, hands of fool, hands that check and flee, for Sleeping bag was a sort of a fabric sculpture uh, sewn large sleeping bag. It was about 10 foot by 20 foot. I like the idea of people looking at it and it's kind of lonely and empty and at the same time imagining what it would be like if it were full of people or you were alone in it. At that time I was doing several performances based on uh, and projects based on the internet as like an attempt to find what's lost. So I always thought of One Cold Hand as like a dating site for lost clothes. It's just sort of a, a citywide project where you could drop off gloves that you found on the street, you know, like those like sad one gloves into boxes and then those were collected and um, cataloged and put online and um, it kind of took off in a really crazy way and uh, I think in the end there were more than 400 gloves. I've been really trying to take a step back and think about my art and music and life as one practice. You know, I'll just sort of come up with a saying and stick it up next to something to remind me like what sort of feeling I want for that song to have. This, no one else will know what I mean, but it's sort of my way of thinking about having like a three-part harmony and what area they would like be in. Probably the most common thread of my work that I can articulate is vulnerability. I've always been interested in how, how we sort of posture to seem stronger than we are. I try not to tell my mom when something's going wrong because I know that she'll just worry. But, uh, you know, at some point, if you're having a surgery, you gotta tell them. I started having back surgeries when I was 12. And so uh, every, every day, everything I do is about whether I'll have a job with health insurance. I went through bankruptcy last year because of medical bills, even with insurance. Um, sorry. It was, it was I think, $18,000, not that much money, but it was more than I could handle. And uh, it was just piling up. And um, so I went ahead and went through bankruptcy. Um, which was scary. <laughs> then I told myself, well, Donald Trump did it five times, so I can do it once. I 
economically the, the best thing that we could offer our citizens is health care because it, as, as, as a lower income uh, entrepreneur, it's impossible to start a small business or, or have your own to be self-employed if you don't have insurance, especially if you have pre-existing conditions. The more that people hear from other Americans, the more we realize that, that it's, it's the only way that we can really be free.